A fitting backdrop to this fall championship season at beautiful Belmont Park, a fall season that came to a close earlier today. Day 38 of 38, hard to believe, but it is the reality. We're glad you're with us, you've made it in time. Belmont Insider, Maggie Wolfendale, Jason Blewett to her right, third floor clubhouse studios for our final time on a day, Maggie, from sun up to sundown. I mean, Belmont Park, a lot of action outside. But Jay, I felt like a chicken with my head cut off, to be quite honest. Uh, it's bittersweet though, having the last day here at Big Sandy, but it was a busy day on Big Sandy earlier this morning, as well as her little sister, the training track. Uh, lots of Breeders' Cup horses put in their final preps for next Saturday and Friday. Some big names, some top trainers, over 20 all together. Obviously, due to time, we can't talk about all of them, but we'll focus in on a couple major ones, beginning with trainer Todd Pletcher, who worked a couple of his top juveniles. He's got two of the top three choices in the BC Juvie, and you caught up with Todd earlier today. Well, with a guy who's always present in the two-year-old races, none other than the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Todd Pletcher here. He had two of his main contenders, at least the East Coast favorites, in Daredevil and Carpe Diem work today. We'll start with Carpe Diem. Worked with an older horse of yours in Vince Ramos in 49, but did it very easily over the training track. He did. He went very well. We uh, let him set off Vince Ramos a little bit the first part. He relaxed nicely, which was what we were looking for. Finished up well, and so far has come out of it in good good order. Now, Daredevil uh, took down the champagne here at, Bel at Belmont. He works pretty quick for uh, comparatively between the two, but he does seem like one that's a little more aggressive early on. Well, he's got very, uh, you know, high cruising speed, natural speed. Uh, I thought his work this morning was sensational. He was uh, well in hand throughout, just uh, on cruise control. And uh, it was actually one of those where you kind of look down at your watch and are a little bit surprised that he went as fast as he did because he was doing it so easily. Great. Well, as far as plans shipping out, when are you leaving and what will they do when out in California? Well, we won't do much there. They're going to ship out on Tuesday, early Tuesday morning, and we'll just have a couple gallops there, maybe paddock school, let them see the gate one time, and pretty much all their preparation done. Well, Todd, can you pick between the two or you can't say? Maybe, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> oh, brutal. The always coy Todd Fletcher. Best of luck. Thank you. And a man that knows what it takes to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and even Juvenile Phillies. He's had success in those races in the past, and it's really Maggie going in this BC Juvenile. It's American Pharaoh versus Todd Pletcher. And American Pharaoh turned in an excellent work this morning as well for uh, trainer Bob Baffert. Uh, he looked great in doing so. So it's going to be a great matchup between three very talented Colts. What about trainer Bill Mott? A busy morning for him. He had a couple of his key contenders running in arguably the two biggest races of the entire championship season. Maggie was alongside the Hall of Fame trainer and he talked about Cigar Street and close hatches. Well, the Breeders' Cup works keep rolling in and I'm here with Hall of Fame trainer Bill Mott who send, sent out both of his Breeders' Cup hopefuls in close hatch, hatches, especially here for the distaff. And it, Grave, Dave Grenning said she looked as though she was back to her normal self working in 47 flat. I thought she went well. I mean, she seems like she's doing well. She, you know, actually, I thought she went into the spinster in good shape and kind of run a little bit of a stinker there. But, you know, her, her works have been good here. We worked her last week and kind of slowed her down, just got a nice, easy work in her. And today, you know, he let her off the bridle a little bit at the eighth pole, and she accelerated and galloped out well and looked like she came back to the barn good. She, To me, she looks good, and, you know, I, I think she's ready. I thought she was ready last time, and she didn't run well. But... Uh, uh, she looks fine to me. Well, we know you'll have her ready for the distap, but one that you've done an excellent job bringing back off of a layoff is Cigar Street, your classic uh, hopeful here. And he turned in a great breeze, and he looked as though he was just galloping, but the stopwatches said differently. Yeah, he he does that. I mean, he, he's one of those horses that can go in 12, 12, 12, 12, and just kind of keep going. And I said, if he can do that for a mile and a quarter, we'll be in good shape. Uh, but he, you know, his, his works have been steady here. He's come out of his last race uh, very good. We sent him down to Churchill to uh, get a race into him, and he won a, a listed stake down there. Never been in grade one company, probably never been in with horses that are as good as some of these, but, uh, you know, I, he looks like it's time for him to step up, and, of course, he'll have to step up if he's going to win this. Yeah, taking down the biggest grade one of the year, but he does look the part. Bill, yeah. good luck with your two. Okay, thank you. The archetype trainer, Bill Mott, no other man quite like him. He has few peers. And I got to say, 
can close hatches a rebound and b i'm dying to see what cigar street does in the classic he is one of the best looking horses i have ever seen i mean if looks you know indicated how talented they were he would be the winner before going <laughs> in there uh hmm. but i'm very interested to see if she can rebound she seems as though she's back on track sometimes phillies are fickle and maybe just threw in a clunker there and and hopefully bill has her actually i know bill has her back on track for uh the distaff so it'll be interesting to see and two uh puka 91 horses Bree is a half mile on the training track and she got the bullets of them as she heads for the breeders cup juvenile phillies she's going to the juvenile phillies off i mean a daylight under wraps hammerlock maiden win didn't beat much but did it quote unquote the right way Truly. anxious to see how she does i can't imagine in the history of the breeders cup bill mott competing in too many of the baby races right no you don't think of that very often but a horse for donegal racing that he hasn't had many horses for them either so uh, that's a, a pretty interesting matchup and they've got a nice one in no, for Judmont with closed hatches and Rashard Lewis as well with yeah. Cigar Street we like that as we get to uh, today's featured fifth race on the card this began the mandatory payout in the closing day pick six carry over two-year-olds on the turf in the AWOD stakes and here's John Abreu jumped up at the start and spotted the field five lengths Park Boss out for the lead. One-Eyed Ray and a lot. So it's three of them across the track for the lead. And those three have almost three lengths on Vision Perfect is racing in fourth. Another three and a half to Xandar uh, in fifth. Gusnado is sixth. Ready Strike is the trailer. One-Eyed Ray, the gray, has now taken the lead as the field heads up the backstretch after an opening quarter mile in 24 and two-fifth seconds. One-Eyed Ray, Park Boss comes back again on the inside side and park boss and one-eyed ray are heads apart two and a half lengths a lot runs in third vision perfect is fourth four lengths from the front ready strike has advanced now into fifth then it's zandar and gusnado one-eyed ray and park boss the two of them remain together a lot now moving up a lot is three wide and vision perfect is four wide the half mile in 50 and four fifth seconds ready strike is in fifth zandar in a gap of three to gusnado now it's four across up front down at the rail, Park Boss, One-Eyed Ray, then a lot, and Vision Perfect on the extreme outside. And the field is coming for the top of the stretch. Vision Perfect and a lot. Park Boss battles on down at the rail. It's Vision Perfect who now comes away with the lead. Xandar making a run now on the extreme outside. Vision Perfect, and here comes Xandar. Vision Perfect trying to hold off Xandar as they come down for the wire, and Vision perfect will do it one by a length and a half Xandar was second Gusnado closed to be third it's nice when things work out the way they did in the AWOD. David Dong trained AWOD, multiple grade ones back in the mid-90s, and he wins the second running with Vision Perfect. He had an excellent day for this closing day at Belmont and Vision Perfect. He was, I don't want to say overmatched in the Pilgrim because he ran a great race. He was did have the perfect trip, but he mm -hmm. showed a new dimension today. He rated beautifully and had a great closing kick. Had a slot through four wide. Not the easiest kind of trip to pull over a widener turf that had taken plenty of rain earlier in the week and Manny Franco and I stakes win here on this closing day card. Yeah, exactly. Manny doesn't have too many stakes that wins to his record, but that's going to change prime very shortly. For a, <laughs> prime for a big, big A fall season. A kid that really can finish strong and boy, oh boy, mm -hmm. does he look pretty on a horse coming down the stretch. As we check out Phillies and Mares, in fact, the pretty group of Phillies and Mares, three and up in the $200,000 final graded race of the meet. It's the turn back the alarm, the 20th running, and a Johnny Eye in the booth. Flores Island, is going out for the early lead. Teen Pauline now moves up. Then it's Endless Chatter. Catch my drift from the outside. Toasting is alongside. Dame Dorothy is anxious to move up there. Tappet's World is next. And the trailer is Moment in Dixie in eighth. As they head up the backstretch, it's Flores Island with the lead by uh, over a headstrong uh, Teen Pauline there. She was moving her head around there, racing in second. Dame Dorothy down on the inside in third with Endless Shatter next in fourth. The quarter went in 24 seconds. Tappet's World is on the move down at the rail. Toasting's in between horses. Then it's Catch My Drift in seventh, and Moment and Dixie continues to trail in eighth. Flores Island with the lead over Teen Pauline. Flores Island by a neck. Teen Pauline right there in second. The half was running 48 seconds. 
Dame Dorothy on the outside in third with Tappet's World down at the rail. And then comes Toasting, who's advancing. Toasting is moving up now and just behind the front runners. There goes Teen Pauline now to poke ahead in front of Flores Island. Dame Dorothy's on the outside and Toasting is fourth, followed by Catch My Drift. Then the Tappet's World, Moment in Dixie, and they're at the top of the stretch. And it's Teen Pauline and Dame Dorothy. Dame Dorothy now to take over the lead. Catch My Drift moving up into second. And on the outside, it's Long Shot Moment in Dixie. Towards the rail, it's Toasting. A 16th out. Dame Dorothy trying to hold off Catch My Drift. Dame Dorothy does it and stays undefeated. Dame Dorothy defeats Catch My Drift. Toasting was third. Moment in Dixie fourth. An unbeaten stakes winner on this closing day. Dame Dorothy, a perfect four for four. She stepped up her game tremendously here for her connections. Todd Pletcher, whose other horse didn't have the most ideal trips. I'm sure Team Pauline, that's not what they were looking for off the bench, but Maybe she comes out of it well, and it's a good prep for her uh, reigning uh, title at Aqueduct if she can reclaim that. But speaking of the big <laughs> A, Dame Dorothy, $400,000 comely. Maybe that's where we see her so. next. Regardless, it all worked out here on this final Sunday. Bobby Flay, part owner, was in the winner's circle with Maggie after taking the stake. Here with Celebrity Chef, well, better known as a horse owner, <laughs> that is Bobby Flay, owner of Dame Dorothy. And your parents were here today. No, no. Exactly. It's the real Dame Dorothy is my mom, Dorothy Flay, and she was um, happily here today. Uh, what you know? This is why you do it. You know, it's like um, I've always. My mother always said to me, "When are you going to name a horse after me?" And so. I was waiting for a good one. Todd told me that he thought she had talent. I was like, you know what, this could be the one. So to have her out here and witness uh, Dame Dorothy winning her first you know, graded stake race, it's special. You really picked the, the right one to name after mom, that is for sure. And you've been patient, and so has Todd. Mm. She's undefeated in four starts. Yeah. Talk about the road getting her to this graded stakes win. Well, you know, she um, she broke her maiden about a year ago at Aqueduct. Um, she, she, she got left 10 lanes behind and won the race. And we thought, wow, that's pretty special. And then she won, she won, uh, she won off in Gulfstream in the slop. And then she she had like a little sort of uh, you know minor issue. We gave her a bunch of time off. I'm really patient with these fillies because if you're not patient with them, they, they make you patient. So um, you know, the, she came back. She ran a press guile. She was going to run the cotillion actually, and she got like a little bit of a, a virus, and so we decided to skip it. And then. Um, and so, you know, she's doing great, and, and here she is. And she's going to point to the Comely, um, as, far as, as far as I know from uh, Mr. Pletcher. Great. Well, a big A return for Dame Dorothy. Bobby, congratulations. Thanks so much, Maggie. So you get the rematch, you would think, perhaps with the runner-up, the Pioneer of the Nile filly, who was second for Catch Chad Brown. Drift, Catch yes. my drift. She uh, ran she, well, too. Both of these fillies, you know, on paper, they were definitely the unproven two, the less, least seasoned of the grouping, and they really stepped up their game and put the older uh, fillies to shame, really. It's nice getting these high-profile owners in the game, seeing them win, have a good time. I think of Bobby Flay and Jim Rome with shared belief. Your thoughts? Uh, exactly. I think it's fantastic, and both of them are great spokesmen for this sport they try their utmost between their very busy schedules to promote promote it as best they can now i feel the same about eddie olchek who's actually co-anchoring or co-hosting the nbc breeders cup telecast good stuff great ambassadors as we take a little rest on this closing day card stay tuned maggie and i back in a sec Back at Belmont Park, Big A this Wednesday. We shift on over our home for six months in South Ozone Park, Queens. We hope you'll be watching the Breeders' Cup on track at Aqueduct with us or here at Belmont. Regardless, you got the cash, a $10,000 buy-in live money contest, the Breeders' Cup Challenge. Top 15 entrants uh, go on to the DRF NTRA National Handicapping uh, Championship in January out in Vegas. And last year's winner took down over $125,000. Money, 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 as we send it. 
to a guy that's always on the money, John Embrial off the far turn and races two, three, four, seven, eight, and 10. Target center take over target on the outside. For the back, it's Andalusite and Red Guard. There's a 16th out and take over target has gotten the lead. And first time starter take over target. Breaks his maiden going a mile on the wide and it looked like Red Guard did get up for second over the pace setting Zenner. Two of them are heads apart. Savvy, sassy down on the inside and Storm swept on the outside. Dear Mama is third. It's Savvy, sassy now in front by two. Then Storm swept. Majide to two to copy on the far outside. They're coming down for the wire. And it's the red hot Erod Ortiz Jr. riding for red hot trainer Christophe Clement. Savvy, sassy the winner. Storm swept completes the exacta. Portina and a Royale Rose. Susie's a cowgirl at the back. True Romance has opened up. True Romance has a five length lead. Mallory Street in second. And then Royale Rose, a loving Lori down at the rail, and a Candy Portina. No doubt about the winner here. True Romance in a romp under Joe Bravo. Mallory Street second, and Candy Portina was third has moved up on the outside as the field hits the head of the stretch the half mile in 48 and one there's room on the inside there for princess jenny and she's coming on through now and going up to challenge for the lead and princess jenny has the lead neck of the moon is rallying down at the rail and image of noon is moving up on the outside and here comes rumble doll so it's the two grays image of noon and neck of the moon and it's going to be tight it's a photo finish. It looked like Image of Noon got it, but a photo with Neck of the Moon. Rumble Doll, a close third. American trying to pull off a big upset here. Ocala Jim is now rallying down at the rail. On the outside, it's Powerful Instinct. Adirondack Dancer now comes on through. Energy Spirit on the far outside. It's Ocala Jim with the lead over Adirondack Dancer, and Ocala Jim takes it. Adirondack Dancer was second. Ironicus came from last to get third. Head for home, the half in 47 and four. It is Lakeview Lady, and here's Blistering Strike on the outside. Lakeview Lady holding on to the lead. Now Blistering Strike getting closer in second. Lakeview Lady by a length. Blistering Strike driving on the outside. It's Lakeview Lady and Blistering Strike. They're gonna be one, two. It's gonna be a photo finish in the fall finale here at Belmont. Lakeview Lady. Seven pound apprentice Andre Wari narrowly over Taylor Rice who lost her bug midway through the Saratoga meet in the last. Always good to see John Hurtler in the winner's circle and he did it at a big price in the nightcap and we certainly hope you had that horse to end the meet. Big prices, eh, we didn't see too many of them the first half of this card, including True Romance, who capped a rolling double of $4.60 in races three and four. She was pretty good, Maggie, second time out. She was very good. I don't know what she faced, but with a field like that, that's how you want to win. I mean, she what was the final time, 110 and change, and she's under wraps under Joe Bravo, and she wins by, what, 10 lengths at the end? It looks so, so. So that was a really good performance. It was. It's always a question of are they going to regress off of that, you know, mm -hmm. fast, f fast fig, fast race that she ran first time out. And I was a little concerned, but she proved wrong. And she you don't know what the story is or what went on behind the scenes, but Bobby Flay talked about with the Phillies, patience being needed. And look, I mean, you're dealing with True Romance, who's run twice. A couple months, she's going to be a four-year-old. Exactly. Uh, that's always a funny way to look at it. But you got to be patient. If you have a horse with talent, don't ruin them by, by pushing them into something they're not capable of. Well, speaking of talent, what a closing weekend at Belmont Park this fall for E-Rod Ortiz Jr. He is the meet's leading rider. A couple of aqueduct riding titles to his credit in the past. His first one right here at Belmont. Uh, he's moving on up with the big dogs. And, you know, you got to think about how young he is still. He's only 21. And he took down one of the classic meets in the entire country. And made a huge late run over this closing weekend at Javier Castellano. In fact, won seven races throughout 
throughout the last 20. Just turned 22, in fact, in oh, August. Steve you. Rushing, his agent, does an outstanding job and a fine young man who I would imagine he's got enough business and, and has enough connections where he could ride at Gulfstream, but I would imagine he's staying at the Big A where Chad Brown has had a string over the last few winters. Cherie DeVoe does a, uh, an excellent job running the show in New York for Chad year-round and his third consecutive Belmont Fall training title. Yeah, and coming off a second-place finish to Todd in the Saratoga trainer stand standing. So Chad's on a roll, and, and like you said, Cherie does an excellent job over the winter months. I think of the work that she did with Breer's Cup Classic contender Zevo. Who actually breezed five furlongs on the main track earlier today, and around the minute, Michael Dove in the meantime winning another meet title. I mean, this is a guy that supports this circuit year-round Won the Aqueduct Spring, Saratoga, and Belmont Fall with 13 wins. What makes him such a dangerous owner? Uh, because he's so shrewd with his claims. He's a claiming trainer that, you know, isn't afraid to drop them if they need to be dropped to, to get a win. And, and he does a great job at that. And he finds horses that aren't overly obvious and seems to improve them. Well, I think a Condo Commando, grade one spinaway winner, bought her for around 60, 70,000 yeah. at auction. And even Bel Galante, you talked about her shrewdness in the claim box a grade one winner who's running next Friday or this coming Friday in the Breeders' Cup to staff. As we run towards this final timeout, we're nearly at the 16th pole on this closing day edition of Insider. Maggie and I are back with the home stretch in a second. Now's the time to sign up for a Naira Rewards account with our new Bet 100, Get 100 bonus. We want to deposit $100 into the accounts of new signups during the Belmont Fall Championship Meet. Just enroll, bet $100, and you'll receive $100 in your account the next day. It's that easy. Plus, new signups can access the brand new Naira HD app and watch live streaming races on their smartphones. Sign up today on track or at NairaRewards.com. Back at Belmont, clouds rolling in. The wind is picking up. Mother Nature gave us a nice closing weekend, though, and we certainly want to thank all the fans. And look, there's no rest for the weary. November, a big month. We've got the Breeders' Cup. We've got the Aqueduct Handicapping Challenge and certainly Holiday Fest anchored by the Cigar Mile, but a number of new improvements. And this is a contest that annually sells out, so get that entry fee in ASAP. But a number of fan improvements over at Aqueduct Maggie. I was reading 500-plus new HD televisions and some HD. Uh, some big screen HD infield boards, which will be kind of cool. Oh, excellent. Y you know, Aqueduct is a track that's obviously smaller than this uh, Belmont surface, but, you know, anything that kind of brings you closer to the action and those big screen boards, especially in HD, totally do. And the beauty of social media, I think we all get up close and, and to the action, and we're all connected in the game, our love of thoroughbred racing. And if you're not on Ira.com on a regular basis... Hop on over there. They got a pretty cool pull yeah. up, and you can give Maggie and I a follow on Twitter. You might get a follow back. And this was a pretty cool poll, actually, that's up, and it's up currently. Your favorite part of the meet. Some pretty cool highlights, so many to think about. And um, let's get to the first one the replay of Kate is a 10, <laughs> who we gave a 10 last Sunday with her jumping the shadow at the finish line. Yeah, she definitely has a second career, that's for sure, <laughs> when her racing days are over, because this was great scope. Uh, uh, jumping what I'm sure she thought was a black hole and look ears pricked that's that's exactly what you want to see you know with a, a future jumper <laughs> she'll be your favorite for the New I York turf riders the next summer as a you know a Grand Prix rider though. Navin Mangale the winning rider for Joe Park who had a big penultimate week here at Belmont two wins Joe is in action on opening day Wednesday at the Big A but Kate is a 10 actually favorite in the current online poll and uh, really? she was terrific winning now certainly for from a class standpoint, nowhere near as good a horse, obviously, as Tonalis. But seeing this guy come back off the Belmont Stakes win and take the Jockey Cup Gold Cup was a top highlight of this fall season. It really was. That whole day was a top highlight of Belmont, as it always is for the fall. And he just came with monster strides at the end. It was great to see a horse do that once again with a Belmont win and then right back with a win in the Jockey Cup Gold Cup. And we've had Gold Cup Classic winners. We've had Belmont Classic winners. No horse has ever won all three of those races. So hopefully Tonalis can uh, make a little bit of history Saturday, November 1st at around 8.35 our time out in the $5 million Breeders' Cup Classic and maybe a Breeders' Cup Sprint or Philly Mare Sprint.
different win in the cards for Artemis Agritera, the New York bred, who, I mean, at the quarter pole, you would have said, I'll give you 20 to one and bet as much as you want with me because she cannot get up to win the gallant bloom. This honestly, Jay, is my favorite moment. I actually wasn't even here this day, uh, but just going back and watching the replay several times, she's awesome. It, it, Mike Cushion's done an excellent job with her, as I've said, and just talk about the will to win, and she had it. And kudos to La Dad, who set ridiculous fractions and then came back to win the New York bread race uh, here on Showcase Day. But it was it was a great, great win by Artemis Agritera. And how terrific would it be to see Mike Hushin get a Breeders' Cup win out on the West Coast? It would be amazing. Mike is a great horseman, but also a great person. And I, I really enjoy every morning out there with him and you know he's always has that dry humor that, yeah. you, that you love but the consummate professional totally. who's been winning i've been coming to the track since the early 90s he was winning back then and he's still winning now and speaking of winning a lot Todd Pletcher, who has won a bunch of champagnes, Uncle Mo, Daredevil, Shanghai Bobby, Proud Accolade, and Daredevil, a 106 buyer in this tour de force. This was a, the easy button. As I've said, rap, under wraps here, uh, and he looks to be one of the favorites, and it Todd kind of alluded, at least what I was getting from him, that he really likes this horse going forward. Well, could be an unbeaten two-year-old champion as Private Zone returned to Belmont Park earlier in the meet and won back-to-back -back Vosburgs and did it in game fashion. He does this. He likes to get past, and then he likes to come back, as we saw, like, a cop, carbon copy performance of 2013 this year once again. And he's so game. He just, he wants to just be you know, head in head and, and duke it out with another horse. Well, we hope he runs well in the Breeders' Cup sprint. And what about our Joe Hirsch winner in main sequence, who switched tactics, was up close to a pedestrian pace and gutted it out the win for Grand Motion and Raji Mirage. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't like to get hit very often as you see his tail flashing around uh, there with Raji, but he does respond to it. And this was a thriller once again, as have all three of his wins this year. Do you in like the him US. at all in the, uh, excuse do. me, do you like him in the Breeders' Cup turf? Oh, I totally do. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, yes. Johnny V isn't quite as an aggressive rider as Raji Mirage, and I th that concerns me a little bit, but hey, he's a Hall of Fame rider and he's won several of these. So, you know, it, he, he could have found worse. A multiple grade <laughs> one winner from one to another. We've got Andy in the mix, who to look for opening day over in South Ozone Park. Well, we're going to assume that the weather is great for opening day at Aqueduct, and we're on the turf. The weather forecast is good for this week, so it's a fair assumption. The third race, a maiden special weight for New York bred race. Horses on the turf, mile and a 16th. I like a second-time starter, the number two, Massalimo, a horse that I think is going to benefit greatly from his debut. To me, he broke slowly. He just needed that start, and I actually thought he ran fairly well, all things considered. You know what? The horses he's facing have had their chances in here, he hasn't. Just a second-time starter. The number two, Massalimo, in the third race at Aqueduct on opening day this coming Wednesday. Jimmy Bond, second time out. Luis Saez actually aboard that good horse. It'll be good to have Luis back. We hope he's doing okay, and we certainly want to... You know, before the buzzer sounds, we want to thank the fans. Thank, thank you for you. everything. It's been a terrific fall. The weather at times a bit tough, but we certainly appreciate you supporting New York Racing, and we're back at it this coming Wednesday at the Big A with the first race post of 1 p.m.